Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's time for Sharing Saturday. Welcome. I'm Pastor Mark. Uh, this is our midday moment for the day, and I'm happy to be with you on this beautiful day. I don't know if you've been outside yet today, but it is gorgeous out there. We have the, the windows open. We uh, You might hear the occasional banging. I think my neighbor across the, the street is building something, so if you hear that or a lawnmower in the background, that's because it's gorgeous out there and we've got our windows open. But I am so happy to be with you today. Uh, it's a privilege to share with you today uh, from some of my experience and from God's Word. So uh, thank you for joining me and let's dive in here and see what God's going to teach us today. I always find it amazing and I, I hope you do too that you know we look back on our past, you know, especially as I get older. There's more past to look back on, I guess. Um, but we look back to see, and you see what God has taught you over the years. It's amazing. I remember one really important lesson I learned. Well, actually two lessons, um, but they came out of one experience. Um, I was a young adult in my early 20s. I was studying music at Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana. That's right, home of the Hoosiers. Some of you would know them for their basketball program. Very famous, uh, mostly because of their chair-throwing coach, Bobby Knight. Um, but most of, most, a lot of people don't know that Indiana University also has a world-class music program. And so I was privileged to be able to study there for a couple of years. And while I was there, of course, I, well, I shouldn't say of course, but I, I got involved with a, a small church there. I, I was a, a believer at the time, and I... And I knew it was important to stay connected to church, so I got involved with a small local church. And eventually, just because I wanted to serve, I wanted something to do other than school all the time, I joined the choir at the church. It was, I mean, choirs are great. I don't know if you've ever been in a choir or not, but, uh, you know, there's, oh, there's good people in the choir, and this choir was, was no different. There were good people. We sang good music of probably at least half the choir were music students from the university, so... Uh, we were able to do some really fun stuff. And and then, of course, every choir rehearsal, we would spend some time uh, doing maybe a short devotional and, and, of course, praying for each other. And that time was very special as well. And it gave me a, a connection uh, to people outside of school. And it was good. But I don't know if you know this or not. You probably do if you've been in a choir or involved in anything like that. Um, in order to sing in the choir, you have to attend rehearsals. Right? You can't just show up on Sunday and sing. No, there's, there's work, there's preparation that goes into getting ready for Sunday. Um, you have to rehearse. It's like that with most things, whether it's um, you know, sports, if you want to be part of a, a good team sport, especially, or, you, or an individual sport, you have to practice. You have to, uh, you have to rehearse. You have to um, develop your skills. You have to get better at what you do. See, it... Presenting the final product, you know, whether it's the performance or playing the game or whatever it is, that is exciting and rewarding. And, and that's what everyone loves to do. But the hard work of preparing is much less glamorous. So sometimes it's just hard work. And I must admit, there were times when I didn't feel like going to that midweek choir rehearsal. I just, I didn't feel like it. And I remember one time in particular, it was in my second year in Indiana, and I was, I was down. I was, I was discouraged. I was tired. I was bummed out. I just didn't, I just wanted to stay home that night. I had a long day. I didn't feel like going out again in the evening. Um, I want to stay home in my little house I rented with three other guys there and just do nothing. I wanted to mope around, maybe feel sorry for myself, maybe go to bed early, get some sleep, anything but go to choir rehearsal. And I came, I came this close to not going. But I, I picked myself up and I dragged myself off to rehearsal, mostly out of duty because I knew it was the right thing to do and that's how my parents raised me. You follow through on your commitments. Um, and of course, I put on a brave face. No one at choir knew that I didn't want to be there or that I wasn't planning to come, you know, you smile like we always do when we do things like that. And, and I went to rehearsal that night. Well, that simple 
choir rehearsal that one evening was amazing. Um, I, I don't even remember the details, but I remember how it made me feel. I know the music, the music we sang encouraged my soul and my spirit. The devotional, although I don't remember the details, I remember it was just what I needed to hear that night. And the prayer time that we had together was was moving and powerful. I I left that rehearsal feeling so encouraged and invigorated. And I remember as I drove out of the church parking lot thinking to myself, I came this close, this close to missing out on that tonight. You see, if I'd stayed home, I would have missed out on the incredible, incredible blessing I received from God that evening through his church, ministering to me without even knowing it. Have you ever had an experience like that? Where you did something you didn't really want to do, but you did it because you felt you had to, you really you were supposed to, so you did it, and then you were so thankful afterwards that you had, because it was such a blessing to you. I mentioned earlier that God taught me two things through that experience. Well, the first was a, a pretty simple life lesson, an, an, ex, an extension or a continuation of what my parents had always taught me. Follow through on your commitments. When you commit to something, you do it, even if you don't feel like it. Because you just never know. See, I believe God blessed me and encouraged me that evening as a reminder that my participation in that choir was not just, it wasn't just a duty, it was that God had stuff for me there. And it wasn't just about me serving the church, it was about the church serving me. And as I was faithful to him and followed through on my commitment, by not failing to meet that commitment, I received God's blessing that night. So follow through on your commitments. But the second lesson was something I didn't learn right away. It wasn't, it was, there was no light bulb that went off that night in my mind, but it was, as I look back on it, that evening was the beginning of a journey for me in understanding a very great and important biblical truth. And that truth we find in Ephesians chapter 4. In Ephesians chapter 4, wonderful chapter of, of Ephesians. I, I love Ephesians. But Paul is talking all about unity, unity within the body of Christ, the church. Um, and he talks about how we have different gifts and and we all have different roles to play. And, and then he says this, speaking about the different roles or gifts, in verse 12, he says, these, these are given to equip his people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. There's, there's a ton of stuff in that little passage, but the main thing that, the, the overarching thing in that text that I see and that I was learning and I began to learn that night was we grow as Christians in community. We don't grow in isolation. We, we need each other, the whole body of Christ, the church. The, the, the church, the body of Christ is designed, it says, to grow and build itself up as each part does its work. You see, I that night, even though I didn't realize it, I was spiritually depleted that evening. It might have felt like a physical thing. I might have felt like I was just tired or emotionally spent. But 
there was a spiritual depletion in my life that I didn't even know, that I didn't even recognize. And God had the solution for that waiting for me at choir rehearsal. If I had stayed at home in isolation by myself and just moped around the house, how would I have been encouraged and built up? Would, would keeping to myself and just being bummed out, would that have helped me mature and grow and attain the whole measure of the fullness of Christ, like it says in Ephesians? Not likely. I probably just would have spiraled down a little further into despair until something else happened. You see, God had members of the body of Christ, members of his church, prepared for me, waiting for me at that rehearsal to minister to me, to encourage me, even though they didn't know what I was going through. I didn't tell them, but they were there, and God used them to build me up, to grow me, to strengthen me, to play an important part in my ongoing sanctification, and ultimately to make me more useful to the body as well. See, this is how the church, the body of Christ works, not in isolation, but in community. We need each other to become mature believers. Otherwise, as, the, as Ephesians says there, we would remain infants, subject to all the perils of infancy. So we need to stay faithful. We need to pursue all the opportunities God has given us to spend time with other Christians. And I know that's hard right now because this whole isolation thing we're in, but we still have opportunity to meet with other Christians. And I would encourage you to do that, especially when you are down or discouraged and don't feel like it, because that's probably when you need it the most. When you feel like not getting together with God's people is probably when you need to get together with God's people. Pretty simple, I guess, but what are you going to take away from today's talk? What are you going to learn from, from this today? Well, first of all, don't ever skip choir rehearsal. That's a freebie, actually, for Pastor Steve and Pastor Jordan. You're welcome. But no, in all seriousness, don't ever skip out on the opportunities you have to connect with other believers. Whether those believers are friends or family or your DC group or an area in the church in which you serve, don't ever skip out on the opportunities you have to get together with them and to do things with them and to talk to them because you never know what God has planned for you. You never know how God is going to use them to encourage you or maybe how God is going to use you to encourage them. See, we as believers are the body of Christ, the church. We are all in this together and we need each other. Every part of the body is important. And together, we work together to build each other up and to grow the body into maturity in Christ Jesus. So don't skip out. Don't miss out. You never know what you might be missing. Let's trust God to minister to us all, to each other, through his church. That's how we planned it. That's how he designed it. That's his primary means of our growth. As we spend time with other believers, we sharpen each other, we teach each other. So don't give up. Even when it's hard, even when you're discouraged, even when you're frustrated, get together with other believers in every way you can. And let's see what God will do through his church. Let's pray together. Lord God, thank you so much for our time together today. Thank you for your church, for this amazing body of believers that we belong to with Christ as the head, and, and we are the body, and, and every part of the body that works together to help each other, to strengthen each other, to grow each other, to minister to one another. Lord, I thank you so much for this, for this body, for the church, and for, for what you're doing through it, Lord. I pray that you would help us to be faithful, to do our part that we would show up, that we would, we would just be there, we would be present and available so that you can use us to minister to others and you would use others to minister to us. Lord, thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit through your church 
And Lord, I pray that you would help us to grow to full maturity in Christ Jesus as the body of Christ. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, I hope you enjoy the rest of your Saturday together, hopefully with other believers. Um, maybe it's just your family. But enjoy your day, enjoy the good weather, and I hope you can join us tomorrow morning, Sunday morning. we got worship at 9 and 11 online, our website, calvary.on.ca, YouTube or Facebook. Of course, our midday moments will continue next week, Monday through Saturday, every day at noon. Hope you can tune in and be encouraged. Thank you so much for joining me today. Blessings, everyone. Have a great day.